Today's episode is going to leave you motivated, inspired, just, oh man, Dr. Thomas Hemingway has such a positive energy. Of course he does because he lives in Hawaii. Lucky, not lucky. He created that for himself, but yeah, he just, he's got such good vibes. Um, he's a board certified physician. He's a father of six, a surfer and host of a top health podcast and a recent author of a new book, Preventable five powerful pearls to avoid devastating disease and build unshakable health. He just gets it. He, I was so, it was so awesome. Sometimes if you guys follow me on social media, you know, sometimes I get all in my little hissy fits (laughs) for lack of a better word. Uh, just being like, how come doctors aren't asking why, how come they're not looking at root causes stuff? You know, I get in my little, and I'm like, but there's some that are. And (laughs) Dr. Hemingway is one of those docs. Wow. He just gets it. He's talking about food as medicine. Um, taking simple steps, just being real about what's needed for health, talking about gut microbiome, sleep, and just all all of these powerful things. But it's, it's more than that. What I really appreciated about Dr. Hemingway is like, he's a father of six who is doing all of this stuff. And he's just talking about how he's just, how he is living life. It's like an immersion experience. He's super healthy. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. We'll go ahead and get right into it. Um, oh, before we do, make sure that you um, visit his website. We'll link that below. I thought I had it written down, but I don't. Okay, so we'll link it below. Sorry, <laughs> Dr. Hemingway. All right, guys, let's go. Here is Thomas Hemingway. Dr. Hemingway, I wanted to start with just some like I actually, I think this whole episode's gonna be a lot of wisdom because everything that you're teaching is is in in that line of thinking. But we're talking about how you live out in Hawaii. Um, I live in Utah. You're saying you've been here, you know, a lot this winter. Your kids are surfing when they're in Hawaii. You have six kids. They're skiing, snowboarding, getting out in the mountains when they're here. And we were talking about social media, kids, nature. Can you just share some some wisdom nuggets on what you've learned from parenting six kids and why this is so important? Oh my gosh. <laughs> my, my kids teach me something new every single day. And I think it's such a gift because one of the things that's benefited me in my life is that I've always been somebody who loves to learn each and every day, yeah. something new, whether it be in my sphere or out of my sphere, I love to learn new things. And kids yeah. are, I, I think for me, they help me be humble because they'll yeah. ask you all kinds of crazy, you know, I got two in college and then my youngest two are in elementary school. And then I got a couple in between and they'll just ask you point blank, some of the most random stuff. And you're like, I, a lot of times say, I don't know, but let's yeah. find out together. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, as far as the, you know, you mentioned the outdoors and being able to get outside and do all kinds of whether they be physical things in the elements, it's it's amazing. It's one of the, I think, most underestimated tools that we have available yeah. to us is the outdoors. In yeah. fact, um, not, not just nature, but just when you get out there, especially with people you care about or your pets, you know, some kind of community, it's a game changer. I mean, everything gets better when you get outside, you get some fresh air and you get some movement in. And then if you're with people that you love, like with your kids, oh my gosh, they will remember these things forever. You know, they're not going to remember what movie you took them to, but they're going to remember, Hey, you remember that time, dad, when we did that camp, we had a campfire, we sat around and we chatted the whole night, or we were out skiing together and we did that one hike and it was amazing. Like that's the kind of thing that they remember. And I have to credit, I'll be honest. I I've always been an outdoors kind of guy and kid my, my whole life. I grew up Mm -hmm. in California and I spent, you know, the better part of my life outside, whether it be on a bicycle, a skateboard or surfing, or in the winter, you know, I got to go snowboarding every now and again, I lived about five hours. So it wasn't every day, like my kids get spoiled late <laughs> lately, but uh, yeah. it, it just getting out there was so refreshing to me. And I learned so many life lessons outside, whether it be, you know, trying right. to figure out a problem, you know, climbing a uh, rock, you know, uh, you know, mm. I did lots of rock climbing, mountaineering when I was younger and, and solving cool. problems outdoors yeah. and you learn about, you know, friendships and you learn about teamwork. And I mean, mm. just all of these kind of life lessons that totally. I think nowadays, a lot of times kids don't get the opportunity as often because 
they're staring into those, you know, five by seven pieces of uh, equipment there, their cell phones and tablets and yeah. you know, whatever that is. And they're not even in the real world. They're in this virtual universe right. where things are so bizarre and chaotic and, and totally. Oh my gosh. So being outside, oh, so much benefit from the fresh air to, of course, the vitamin D that right. finally we're appreciating, right? The last couple right. of years of the pandemic, people are like, oh, vitamin D is actually a good thing. Oh, fresh air might be a good thing. Like yeah. it's always been a good thing. Like keeping <laughs> I'm us like, up inside was not a good thing. <laughs> I know. I'm like, sunlight is bad for us. Like what, what, like, look, Look what we dropped into. Like, you just have to use basic common sense. Like, obviously, we're meant to be getting that or it wouldn't be there. And I love this. It's, 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 you're right. It's so underestimated. I was just on a call with a new client right before this, and she was talking about the typical pattern that people experience of you're stressed out at work, you're stressed out with life and you come home and you quote unquote, can't be good anymore with your food and you eat all the junky things (laughs) and you blame yourself, you know, and like so many people are in that pattern. Yeah. And I gave her the example of, Okay. Think about when you are walking out and outside, like even if it's just around your neighborhood or you're just outside and you're just like, do you, are you like sitting there jonesing for candy while you're out there? No, (laughs) because you're regulating your nervous system. You're getting fresh air. You're, um, de-stressing, you know? And I think so much of, you know, we're going to get into these pearls that you have. It's just like so much of these, so many of these habits, that cause us to get into these really suboptimal health states, I think are a result of being removed from our natural habitat. And so like yeah. one of my personal goals right now is we just talked about the we, similar Canyon that we b- visit here in Utah. That's my, that's my baby, that Canyon. I love it in there. And so that's one of my, is like, even though it's snowy, I'm getting in that Canyon every, every weekend I bought little chains for my boots so I can hike, you know, and I'm making oh. plans. I'm texting friends. I made plans with my kids. I'm like, get, I'm getting out there. Cause I know how much it impacts us. So thank you for sharing that. And the surfing yeah. thing is cool. Oh. The surfing thing is just cool. I, 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 it's, I it's admire kept that. Me, it's <laughs> kept me grounded. My wife knows yeah. that if I don't get my adults need to get their wiggles out yes. too. You know, it's like, yes. you know, when your kid needs a timeout, like we need a timeout out too as an adult we need to get some fresh air we need to move our body and i just wanted to add that like sometimes we overcomplicate things i want to give you like a five minute morning routine that is doable you know people have written books on you know the miracle morning how you can have this one hour like yeah get that you got six kids you work a couple jobs you don't have an hour to yourself unless you get up at 3 a.m or something Uh right but you could literally take five minutes and in that five minutes I have this super simple thing that I do. And cool. most of the time it's outside. Even in the winter, I try to get myself outside for a couple of reasons. One, when the daylight hits your mm-hmm. eyes, you have these right. special cells in the back of the retina that communicate with your brain and help set your clock, your circadian rhythm. And when you get outside right. in the morning, this is one of the best things you could ever do for an amazing sleep yep. that night. The yep. best sleep ever literally starts in the morning. If you can get out there for a couple of minutes, five to 10 minutes, let the sunlight hit your eyes yeah. while you're out there, just go for a simple little walk. Don't take your cell phone, right? Leave that at home for the right. five or 10 minutes. It'll right. still be there when you get back. I promise. Yeah. And just take a couple of deep breaths, get out in nature, move your body, take a moment and have a little bit of a reflection or gratitude, whatever Mm -hmm. you want to call that meditation. Mm -hmm. And you can do that all while you go for a simple walk. So you do some gratitude, do some meditation, you get some fresh air, you see the sunlight. And and this is not wearing sunglasses. You don't want to wear sunglasses. You want everyone's driving to work with sunglasses on. And I'm like, no, (laughs) no, let the light hit your eyes. You'll sleep so much better. So literally you can do this in five to 10 minutes. You go for a simple walk. You have a moment of gratitude, a moment of meditation and reflection. And then the last part of that is you literally pick three things, three things that you have to get done today. The must do list. You know, sometimes we make a list of like 10 or 20 things and it's like, no, 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 no. What are the biggest needle movers you must do today. Pick three things. Love it. And then you prioritize and you get those done. And if you get extra beyond those three things, bonus round, but right. just pick three things that you really want to accomplish today. And that routine literally takes you five to 10 minutes. It doesn't yeah. have to be an hour. It doesn't yeah. have to be, you know, sit and get into your pose for 30 to 60 minutes and meditate. Like if you can do that, fantastic. Cool. I, right. I haven't figured that out 
on yeah. a regular basis with six kids and a couple different jobs that I do and things <laughs> I, I, yeah. I take five to 10 minutes, you know, and I, it's me time. I leave the phone. And yeah. if I'm, if I'm blessed with the opportunity to be in Hawaii, I'll go surfing and I accomplish those things while I go surfing. Yeah. But that few minutes outdoors yeah. is a game changer. And I would recommend people do that. Even if it's cold outside, get some warm clothes on. You can tolerate mm-hmm. five or 10 minutes outside. Yeah. It'll, it'll literally just the, the, the amount that you will appreciate those you'll look forward to it. Once you get yeah. into the routine, you will yeah. literally look forward yeah. to it. And that five to 10 minutes can change your day and mm-hmm. change your life. <laughs> mm, that's so profound. I love it. You've inspired me because it's, it's single digits here in Utah yeah, right now it is. in the morning, but I do a lot of cold immersion. So it's kind of changed my relationship with cold. I'm actually like, yeah, this is good for me. But even I do, I meditate for 10 minutes every morning. Um, and then do have like a few minute long little routine that I do, but you've inspired me to try that outside. I'm gonna try that tomorrow. Outside, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I consider my walking into the gym, like pretty badass in shorts, yeah. but <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll try, yeah. I'll try walking out meditating. Maybe I need a dog to pull me out there. <laughs> Maybe, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. I love that though. Yeah. Just wisdom. And, and you know, I think it goes along with what we were saying about kids in the beginning is like, I remember, I hope, I hope everyone can remember. I hope you had this experience as kid, but I remember my mom saying, go play outside and me being like, okay. And just walking out there with literally no agenda nothing to think about, nothing to do. And just literally walking around in my yard and then just like sitting there, like playing with grass or clovers or dirt or finding an ant. And that's, that was med- That's the purest meditation ever. That is the purest. It's just awareness. It's just being, and it's so good for stress levels. So thank you for sharing those pearls. And I want to get into some of your other pearls here. Um, I love that you say, did you know that seven out of 10 of the leading causes of death worldwide are almost entirely preventable through simple, natural, and largely free techniques? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's like yeah, I, the message isn't getting out there because if you go to your doctor and they start, you know, telling you, okay, well, you know, you just have this. It's just, you ask them, well, why, why do I have, you know, heart disease or diabetes? Oh, it's just a thing. You just got it. Here's your prescription. It's like, no, reject that. If that's the kind of the the kind of thing that your doctor's telling you, consider getting a new doctor. Like literally yes. present day, and most people have no idea, but for the first time, Kara, in over a hundred years, certainly in our lifetimes, the trajectory of our human lifespan is now going down. And this is even pre-COVID. Several years prior to COVID, our life expectancy started to drop. And of course, it got worse with COVID because any kind of condition that you may have, be it diabetes, obesity, right. heart disease, whatever, made COVID worse. Right. And so it dropped even more during COVID. But this has never happened in our recent human history. Every year, the life expectancy goes up. Now it's been going down. And literally mm-hmm. seven of 10 of these leading causes of death, which most of us are aware of them, right? The number one killer worldwide is heart disease in women and men. And in every, you know, literally all across the whole world, heart disease is still the number one killer. Yet we have the most amazing technology. You know, you are, are suffering an acute heart attack. We can go into that vessel, into the coronary, mm-hmm. tiny little, tiny mm-hmm. little artery. We can open it up with the balloon. We can leave a stent in there, keep it open. Like we have all this technology, all of this healthcare spending and we suck. We are terrible, <laughs> at least in the Western world, especially the US, at any of these chronic diseases heart disease, diabetes, obesity, cancer, stroke, neurodegenerative disease, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. All of these are literally almost entirely preventable. Yet you go to your doctor and they don't ever tell you that. They don't say yeah. that you can prevent this stuff. Right. They tell you once you have it, oh, you know what? You finally have a blood sugar over 100 on your fasting level. You're getting close to diabetes. Oh, well, let's just wait a little while and see what happens. And right. then maybe we'll put you on a medication. It's like, right. what are you talking about? Wait right. a little while. There's so much that you can do and be proactive. Right. And change the trajectory of all of this. There is so much that can be done. It's just, I know <laughs> I, I like, I had a client recently that had cancer and she was like, basically right on the line of diabetes, like way progressive. No one said any anything to her. I was the first person to even, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. That leads to every, it's so much inflammation predisposes Ugh. you to every disease state. Like no one talked to you about this. I was devastated, oh, you know? And it's... so, 
And you're right. And you have to forgive me because you'll see me on social media from time to time. I'm going to get on my little, <laughs> little rants and little, you know, just letting it all out. I'm like, why are doctors not asking why? They're yeah. not asking what they're not saying. Why do you have hypothyroidism? Why do you have high blood sugar? Why do you have gut issues? No, I see what, and you're asking why. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. For, well, thank you. And you gave the answer, <laughs> the underlying, you know, root of almost every disease out there starts with inflammation. Mm-hmm. And then you have mm-hmm. to ask the question, well, why does the inflammation exist? Because yes. if you have, you know, even, even in the brain, if you have anxiety, depression, you know, all these kinds of things, it's neuroinflammation, it's right. inflammation in the brain, in the gut, same thing. If you have a leaky gut, it's inflammation that's occurring. Yeah. If you have diabetes is inflammatory. Obesity is inflammatory. Cancer is inflammatory. Heart disease is inflammatory. And right. yet nothing is being done about the inflammation. Well, holy crap, guess what? You and I can affect that with what we decide yeah. to put in our cart in the grocery store, what ends up on the tip of our fork, and then what we do throughout the day, whether we move our bodies, whether we get good sleep, whether we optimize our stress, like all these things we have control over. We right. can change this. It's in right. our court. And yet what you said, I wish it was an outlier, but it's so typical. You go to your doctor and they never right. once talk to you about that. They pull out the prescription pad and say, okay, we yeah. got to get you on metformin or get you on this medicine because your blood sugar is getting a little high. And and what you just said about the lady with cancer, I mean, it just, it, it hurts me because right. you and I both know that cancer feeds off of what? Sugar, sugar. off of glucose. Yeah. And if you, if you change your diet around, like that can be a significant help. And it's like right. doctors aren't even going there. I mean, it, some of the know. specialists in that area, like the oncologist, for example, they'll tell you, oh, it doesn't matter what you eat, just eat whatever you want, get, you know, try to just get all the carbs and get everything in. And then you're going to be on chemo and you're going to lose weight. So you want to get fattened up because we plan that you'll lose weight. And it's like, when you eat that kind of, you know, standard American diet, which, you know, most of us call the sad diet, right? Because yeah. it's, is highly processed foods that right. in my mind, that it's not even food. It's a food right like substance, but it's that garbage that feeds inflammation. And yeah. <laughs> most doctors don't even ever mention it. And I know why I, I came from that. You know, I, I went to UC San Diego medical school, top 10 medical school, and we didn't get trained in it. We got trained in disease. Oh, we could recognize what a disease is, right. how to treat it with a pharmaceutical, but we never really got trained on how to prevent disease. It's right. so crazy, but it's right. true. So I, I I understand where they're coming from and I kind of, I feel them, but, yeah. but those that refuse to continue to learn and that yeah. refuse to, you know, see the connections with what actually causes disease. I don't have any patience for that. That's so. exactly how I feel. I finally got to this. I was like, oh, okay. They're just not educated. They like, like literally just don't know. And they don't know. And I'm like, yeah, but hold on a second. How can you have people coming in all day, every day? And they're like, I have hypothyroidism. I have heart and not like, innately say, I wonder why all these people have that. Like, it's just like a basic human reaction in my opinion. And so I'm really glad to hear that you are on the same page on that. And I want to, I want to get into some of these things. I I do want to get into gut health with you. Um, change your gut, change your life. You say, you know, Uh, and so let's get into that. Right. I Um, I love that. One of my favorite um, topics and I'll be, you know, the first to admit it. I didn't learn about it in medical school. Heck, I don't even know if they teach about it now. I went to medical school 25 years ago and we are now thank goodness in a place where it's more common in the vernacular. Most of us have heard of it. We're like, Oh, I kind of heard about that. And even, you know, recently doctors start to say to people, Hey, why don't you take a probiotic if you've been on antibiotics? So they're, they're making some small strides, but literally in the medical field, especially in medical schools, most of the teaching is about 20 years behind, Mm -hmm. you know, the most recent data. And so here's the thing. I, I always start with this we should pay attention to our gut for a couple of reasons. One, all of the microbes that live there, um, number one, they outnumber us. And they also even more significantly outnumber the DNA. In in other words, if you take, you know, the 30 to 40 trillion of them, Mm -hmm. and then you look at the DNA that they have, they actually have much more 10, 20, maybe a hundred times more DNA than we do as humans. And so they outnumber us. They have more genetic material, which ultimately commands what will happen at the end of the day. And most of us don't pay any attention to them. 
And it's crazy. We literally are outnumbered by them. And if we work together, like hand in hand, synergistically, there's so much we can do together. And we're, like you said, tip of the iceberg kind of stuff. Like we finally know that most of the serotonin in the body, 90% is produced in the gut. For example, Mm -hmm. they can produce the bacteria that live there can produce vitamins for us. They help us digest our food so we can actually use it and assimilate it in our bodies much more easily. Mm -hmm. Like they do so many amazing things. But then again, if we don't take care of them, the converse happens, right? We get the, the not so friendly gut bugs that, that do things that aren't great for us. And they manipulate our whole nervous system. They literally send signals, you know, Think right. of your phones and text messages. They send a text message to the brain saying, Hey, eat more of those Oreos or those exactly. Doritos. Or, You're getting or hijacked Cheetos because they literally will send signals to your brain. And this is documented. There's yep. a lot of research there. It's no longer a woo woo kind of topic. No, it's yeah. the real, real deal, hard science where mm-hmm. they literally, like you said, manipulate you. So if you're feeling like, crap, I can't ditch these cravings, crap, I, I just have to have that thing, whether it be, you know, one of these snack foods or even, you know, a, a sweet treat, like that's not you being weak. There's nothing wrong with you. You are not broken. You yeah. are not weak. You are not, it is your gut bugs, yeah. the, the flora there that is telling you to eat this crap. And so if you change the right. gut flora, which can easily be, be done within a matter of a couple of weeks, because these guys die off every couple of days, they're cycling through. Right. And so you can actually change this right. pretty readily. Mm-hmm. And if you feed the good guys like Ackermansia, you know, um, last <clears throat> lactobacillus, there's so many great ones that are there. They will work with you to right. not only improve your health, but you'll actually stop craving all the junk. Food. I know. Like, I mean, even personally, I, I, I was the guy that every night, it's kind of embarrassing to even say it, but every <laughs> night I would sit down and eat a pint of either Ben and Jerry's or Hagen dazs every night for a decade. This this was about ten years ago, and yeah. I was like, "Well, I'm an active guy. Who cares? A calorie is a calorie is a calorie. Right. That's right. kind of what I was taught in medical school." Well, uh, wrong. That's not true, <laughs> of course. But but when I focused on getting my gut healthy, the crazy thing is, I still like the taste of ice cream—a real creamy, thick, you know, just right. super creamy. I could take a bite and just savor that bite. And then I'm good. I don't have to eat the whole carton like I used to. Right. And that's because my gut bugs, my Mm -hmm. so-called microbiota completely changed because Mm -hmm. I fed it differently. I started Mm -hmm. to eat more Brussels sprouts and asparagus and, you know, Mm -hmm. real whole single ingredient foods and less of the food like substances that we tend to eat 60 some odd percent of as, as, (laughs) you know, Americans and Westerners, and it changed everything. It yep. changed everything about my cravings. Certainly my inflammation Same. went way down my kind of brain fog and, and aches yeah. and pains. Like I thought, Tara, I thought when I turned, you know, about 38, 39, I'm like, I'm just getting old. Like I'm starting right. to ache. My That's what everybody so says. I know. Like get out of bed. My back hurts. Like my, my <sighs> wrists and my ankles hurt. Like what the heck? Like I'm still a young man. Like what's going on? <laughs> But when I changed the the health of my gut and I focused on eating both prebiotic, probiotic rich foods and just paying attention to when I was eating, it made all of the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally today, I'm turning 50 next year Mm -hmm. and I have, like I mentioned, you have two college uh, kids, a couple of teenagers, then two young ones, and I can keep up with any of them. I have four boys that are my oldest and they are as athletic. I mean, they're doing double backflips and they (laughs) do, you know, seven twenties on the ski hill and stuff like that. And I can literally, I I may not be doing the seven twenty, but I can get as much air as they do. And I can do all the things that they can do and I can keep up. And I literally feel like I'm 20 and I'm turning Mm -hmm. 50 and I plan to be, and I'm going to say it right here on air because I want to hold myself accountable. I plan to be the first surfer who continues to surf past 100 years old. 100. It. It's never been done before. It's never been done I before. Love so I'm, it. I'm going for it. Yes. <laughs> I love that so much. And yes, I hear this all the time. Oh, I'm just getting old. And, and yeah. it, like, literally <laughs> it, it's just like, I'm like my fist. Cl- I'm like, no, I'm like, that is not what's going on. Something is wrong because I also, I just turned 40 and I feel so much younger, like my experience of like so much than I did in my twenties when I was eating standard American diet. Like it is unreal. I'm like, no, no, no. It's not just, you're getting older. Like something's wrong. You're eating stuff that's inflaming you. That's all. Or yeah, maybe you got something out of alignment and you need to go to a chiropractor. You're not just getting old. You have something going on that you need to take care of. That's it. 
Yes. Yes. And this common myth that like, you know, our quote metabolism slows down, like, holy crap, uh, last year in, in the really famous, you know, very, very excellent journal science, we finally got the the real deal data mm-hmm. on this thousands and thousands of people they looked at. And basically between the age of 20, for some reason, they started at 20, 20 and 60 in that 40 year spell, which most of us are in somewhere in there. Yeah our metabolism does not significantly change at all until wow. we're at least until we're at least 60 and even after 60 it doesn't really change that much and so I love what that. that that really brought to light is that number one we can't blame our you know yeah. our midsection and getting a little soft or our low energy we can't blame it on metabolism like it's just it's wow. not really a thing we cannot do that but what is the deal is our metabolism could be broken. It didn't slow down. It just could be broken. It could not be functioning right. optimally. Right. And the cool thing is we can actually fix that. There are simple steps that I describe in the book with relationship to our food, our movement, our stress optimization, sleep, and things like that, gut health that play into how we can optimize yes. our metabolism. So it does what we want it to do. So we can yes. get out of bed, Tara, and we can tackle our day and we are not encumbered. We're not held back by holy crap, I got to run to the, you know, backpack, fridge, snack store, whatever, every two hours, because right. I feel like I need something like, right. No, when you right. get your metabolism tuned up, you can go hours without eating and you never get hangry and you yep. feel great. You feel yep. Yep. you know sharp and focused and energized. I mean, think of our ancestors, right? Say a couple hundred, even a thousand years ago, they had to go hunt for their food, right? They may not eat for a couple of days, And so they were wired just like we are, but we kind of have forgotten this. They were wired to be alert, to be sharp, to be top of their game, even when they hadn't eaten in hours or even days because they needed to get their next meal. And then we've got this thing where, you know, we got 24 hour, you know, refrigerators, of course, but all the, all the foods, uh, places, the restaurants, all of the things that are available to us, our pantries at home that are literally open 24 hours a day. And what happened the last right. couple of years, pandemic, it got worse, right? We're all at home. We're like right. working from home and we're running to the fridge every hour to go grab something to eat. Like mm-hmm. the average American right now eats nearly 16 hours out of the day. Literally mm-hmm. our eyes are open. We're putting food in like, right. it's terrible. That's right. like the f- first and worst thing that we can do for our yeah. metabolism is to eat all day long. Our body actually needs a break. Yeah. You know, the, the very simple thing that, that you probably learned, um, early on was, you know, the four, four, 12, right. You take 12 hours between dinner and breakfast and between right. your meals of the day, you, you have at least four hours. Yeah. And somehow we got that messed up and we started to go, Oh, to keep your metabolism going, you got to eat yeah. every two to three hours based on no data. <laughs> Yeah. No science. Uh, actually, that just, just make sure you get blood sugar dysregulation. Yeah. <laughs> and don't repair, pro- don't have it's repair processes in your body work at all. Let's just stay in it yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. We got it all wrong, but yeah. our ancestors had it perfectly right. They could go hours and days without eating and they were right. totally fine. And I like, have those genes. We can do that too, but yeah. we got to get out of that you know, Mm -hmm. constant dependency on sugar and carbs and the standard Mm -hmm. American diet. (laughs) Yeah. I have lived, I'm living proof of everything you just described because I grew up standard American diet. We were poor. It was, you know, Taco Bell and Burger King and, you know, the cheapest stuff, you know, like in the nineties, kind of how a lot of people were that didn't have a lot of money. And then I started getting weight issues in third grade. I remember in middle school, listen to this, this is going to make you cringe. You know what I used to eat for lunch every single day in middle school? I would take my lunch money that was supposed to be for like the regular lunch and I would go in the snack line and I would get a frosted honey bun and a can of Hawaiian punch. That is what I would eat. You know how much sugar that is? I know. Probably 150 grams of sugar between those two. And I can't even, like, (laughs) even from a taste perspective, I can't believe I would, like, I can't imagine doing that now. Right? It makes you shiver a little. So, and then it just progressively, you know, got standard, just, I mean, I'm talking mac and cheese with my kids level out of the craft box. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I was eating and everything was hard and I had brain fog and kind of depressive like symptoms and taking everything personally and and just all of it, right? Fatigue all the time. Now I just turned 40 and I'm experiencing all of those things you talk about. Like, it's just like hunger doesn't affect my mood. It's just a hunger. Like I can just tell I'm hungry. It's not like I'm frazzled. Um, 
I, I can have sugar sometimes and I don't feel addicted to sugar. Like I'll forget about it again for days or weeks. It, I, and I really think it's because of my gut bugs. And I think it's also because of sleep. Right. So yeah. like for me getting my circadian rhythm set, that was probably my biggest, like, wow, I really nailed that of 2022. And I can't believe how impacting it was just got really, really, um, it wasn't like militant. It was more like I want to with my bedtime. So yeah. because I yeah. like you, I look forward to my morning routine so much. It's so powerful, like anchoring myself. Like it's like Christmas. Like I can't wait to have, it's my favorite part of the whole day. And so that drove me. It's like, yeah, but I want to feel good when I do that. And I got to get up at five because I got kids and all this stuff. Yeah. Right. If I, and so I started going to bed, changing my nighttime routine. And like now being lean and strong, it's like effortless. I don't, I don't have a meal plan. I don't, it's just, I'm just eating healthy food throughout the day. I do intermittent fast personally. It works really well for me. I think I stopped eating around like three o'clock yesterday. Cause I just went to bed really early and I just wasn't, I had eaten a lot and I just wasn't hungry and I just barely ate at like 12, you know, and I like crushed a workout and I, it's just amazing what your body can do when you like get it into that prime state, you know, and sometimes I eat more frequently than that, but not usually, I mean, it's usually a pretty solid intermittent fasting window. And I can't believe how much it has just made everything easy. It's a, it's a game changer. And it (laughs) it can start with something so simple as just what I call an overnight circadian fast. Like you said something right. that that a lot of us don't do often enough, which is eat an earlier dinner. Just be done eating yeah. by five or six o'clock. Because yeah. what's even more interesting than the intermittent fasting data, if you follow Sachin Nanda Panda out of uh, San Diego, yes. his newest research suggests that the earlier you eat your evening meal, the better. In other yeah. words, he's actually he's actually backpedaling a little bit on the intermittent fasting thing because I I used to be hardcore intermittent fast where I would do 16, 18, 20 uh-huh. hours. I would do the OMAD thing. Like I was going, yeah. you know, like many of us type A people, right? We, we, we see one stuff. thing that looks good and we just right. push it to the max. Right. Now what I do, I'm back to eating three meals a day, uh-huh. but I space them out and I still have a minimum no matter, even if it's the weekend, my minimum window overnight that I fast minimum is always at least 12 hours. Yeah. Usually it's 14 and, and more typically 14 or 15 or 16, but then in those remaining, yeah. you know, 10 hours, um, nine hours, I eat three meals in the, in that time, because I, I have trouble, you know, at my age getting in and anybody probably could, yeah. if you try to get in the appropriate amount of protein, which yeah. is anywhere between 0.6 and one gram per pound of ideal body weight, depending on what your goals are. It's hard to get in. Like for me, minimum, I'm getting in 150 grams of protein a day. Uh-huh. And to do that in an OMAD, a one meal a day, that, yeah. that just doesn't even work. Like, can you imagine how much you'd have to eat to get 150 grams of protein in at one meal? And You're going to so- have to have some crazy yeah. gut health. I tried OMAD during COVID. I was just playing with it. I personally, like it messed up my cycle. And then like, even mm-hmm. when I did a bikini competition, my cycle didn't get messed up. So I'm saying, I mean, that was like, didn't I felt work. like I had yeah, entered a starvation work. contest, you know, and it didn't mess up my cycle, but OMAD did one meal a day, yeah. if you guys don't know what that means. And like, I, so I'm, I totally backed off of recommending that. And like yeah. you said, most people do not have that digestive capacity to be able to digest that. Well, I get it for those of us who like our live streamlined it's like, Oh yay. This is the only time I have to dedicate to eating, but it's like, yeah. nah, I definitely have backed off on that. I want yeah. to ask you too, mm-hmm. what is your reason for having at least 12 hours fasting window? Why? What's the yeah. reason for you? So two, two reasons. And, and one is that the only time your body can access the beautiful process of autophagy, the rejuvenation, the refresh, the cleaning, the getting rid of the junk, the repairing the damaged mm-hmm. cells yep. and so on. The only time that can ever happen is if you're not eating. Right. And the research suggests that if you really want to get into autophagy hardcore, it has to be even more than 12 hours, but yeah. the, the starting point is right around 12 to 13 hours is the starting point. It gets better and better after that, which is why even though I'm not recommending OMAD, at least not regularly, mm-hmm. but it is good to do a prolonged fast every so often. Like for right. me, minimum, I do a 24 hour fast once a month minimum. And then once mm-hmm. a year, I try to do like a 72 hour, mm-hmm. um, sometimes more often than that, but not, not super, super frequent. 
but that is really good to do, Mm -hmm. but not every day. And for a couple of reasons, you know, if we fast too much, too long, we get into exactly what you said. Our body is getting into this sparing mode where it's like, holy crap, I'm seeing less calories. I'm going to have to hold on tightly to the calories that I have. Too much stress. Yeah. Readjust the metabolism as well, because we survived, you know, millennia ago eating, you know, once a week, you Mm -hmm. know, because that's Mm -hmm. all the food that was available. So our bodies know how to do this, but Mm -hmm. it's not good to put them through that all of the time. So (laughs) the window to really get that self-cleaning and the beautiful process of autophagy is minimum kind of 12 to 13 hours. Mm -hmm. And the thing about most people, I, I think don't really get the fact that when you digest food and break it down and assimilate it into the new proteins that you need. It's a super energy intensive process. It takes yeah. a lot of effort yeah. to actually break down your food. And so you, your body needs a break from that. If yes. all day long, we're opening our mouths, yes. like I mentioned earlier, we're eating yes. 16 hours out of the day, that system never gets a chance to rest. Yeah. And if it can't ever rest, it doesn't have time to quote unquote, take out the trash, right? You, yeah. you have four kids. I have six. If you never take out the trash, like what does your house look like? Like, holy yeah. crap, I have to take out the trash every day. Totally. You now there's eight of us and <laughs> right. you know, we're active people. And literally like if we right. don't take out the trash every day, I mean, the place starts looking like, you know, a bomb went off. And so in our body, same thing, we should be yeah. taking out the trash, getting rid of the waste, the yes. toxins, all of these right. exposures at least once a day. And that can only effectively happen when we are not eating, that process won't even start if you have calories yes. in your system. So minimum, and, and and I like 12 hours kind of as a benchmark because yeah. most of us can do that fairly easily. Yes, that's and where I start people trying, too. Yeah, even when, if you're trying for an intermittent fast and a time-restricted feeding type of window a few days a mm-hmm. week or whatever, mm-hmm. starting with the 12 hour, I feel like that's achievable for almost anyone. Yes. And for, for ladies that are still menstruating, it's still achievable at any point in the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, and and all those that you work with know that you shouldn't be pushing your intermittent fast OMAD window, you know, down to right. the, the point where you're about to have your menses, like when those right. five days before your period, like that's the worst time to be fast. Yeah, fasting. your body is definitely I mean, not telling you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I so- have to... I have to highlight your reasons. I really want to, I, I, I figured yeah. those would be your reasons. And that I'm like, that is what self-love looks like. Yeah. That is what I want. What's best for me looks like. And it's so important because especially in the line of work I'm doing every day with people want to lose body fat yeah. and get fit and all this stuff. The reason why they aren't able to achieve that is because their reason is not self-loving. It's outside of themselves. It's this restricted, well, I've got to lose weight, so I can't have the ice cream now. And it, it, if you change your reasons to, I want to be able to repair and cleanse my brain. And hey, thank you, gut, for all the food you've been processing all day. I'm going to give you a little break because I want you to be able to repair also that will drive you to actually do it. It's like, I know I can eat late at night. I don't want to because I know how good I feel in the morning when I don't do that and I'm able to get better quality sleep. And it's just so loving, especially especially to the brain. I think that's one part that gets really underestimated is like we cannot properly properly cleanse our brain, consolidate our memories if we don't do that. And so if you look at it that way, it's like, it's just, I want what's best for me mentality. Yeah. No. And you said something there that I just want to highlight that, you know, a lot of people have, you know, fat loss goals, weight loss goals, Mm -hmm. but honestly, if your first goal was exactly what you said to love yourself, to get yourself healthy and feeling great, the weight loss goals, the fat loss goals, all of that will happen almost effortless, effortlessly, because when you first have the priority to get healthy, Yep, And do the things that'll get your body in its best shape, get your mind, your spirit, you know, all of that functioning well and smoothly, mm-hmm. the weight's going to come off. Like yes. we have this, like you said, we have this restrictive kind of weird mindset. We, okay. We see this number on a scale. Oh, I, I want to drop by 10 pounds or I want to do know. 20 pounds. And that's our solitary focus. And so we're missing work. the boat. We're missing right. the boat. That's the right. wrong thing to shoot for. We I know it's like, who cares for, about that? <laughs> yeah. Feeling, feeling good, feeling our best self, like you said. And, and right. if we give our bodies a rest in not just during sleep, but even mm-hmm. a little bit longer, you know, it's basically it's a couple hours on either end of sleep, you know, only two really. I mean, I like to tell people three hours before bed, don't eat anything for a couple of reasons. One, we want to have right, this beautiful too. process of self-cleaning and autophagy. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. mentioned 
The brain needs to get rid of all the toxins. Absolutely. The glymphatic system of the brain, which, yeah. you know, when I was in medical school, nobody ever heard of that. That was discovered, I think, in uh, 2006 by Dr. Roch or, uh, Jeffrey uh, Illiff and, and Nattergaard in the University of Rochester. That was 2006. So I was well out of medical school by then. Yeah. You know, medical school was 10 years ago for me. And we didn't learn that stuff. But now we know. We know that we have to have that time so that our body can yeah. flush the system, flush yes. the system, get rid of the toxins, get rid of the trash, get rid of the waste. And that only happens if we're not eating. Mm -hmm. Our bodies mm -hmm. need that break. Our brains need it. Everything is better if we allow our bodies to rest, rejuvenate, mm -hmm. repair, yep. flush the system. I mean, it's, and it only effectively happens while we're not eating and hopefully while we're sleeping, sleeping mm -hmm. a solid seven or eight or even nine hours a night, depending on the individual. Yeah. And I can speak on the, the truth of what you said, even from when I was really lean and ripped and fit, but I was still in this, like, that was the main goal, right? That was the main. And so, so I would do all these bizarre behaviors. Like if I ate too much, it's like, well, I better go for a long walk tonight and make sure I use up those calories and all that. But as I shifted into, and it was always hard. It was always hard when the main goal was body composition and all that stuff. When I switched into no, I'm not going to walk. Who cares if I just ate a lot of food? Like I'm not going to walk because it's going to wake me up a bunch and I want to be able to like drift down into sleep. Now that all of my priorities are purely like self-loving, I just want to feel good. I'm effortlessly lean and strong. Yes. I feel like I look better if you now, but it, I don't even care about about that. That's not what it's about. I just want to feel good. And it's, yes. I, I have lived the truth of what you're saying. It is like, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I was doing all that crazy stuff for nothing. If you just make self-loving choices that help you feel good, it just happens naturally. It just happens naturally. So, okay, last thing. And by the way, guys, we, we the overcomplicate things. We definitely overcomplicate things. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the name of the book is preventable. And by the way, where's the best place for them to get the book? Yeah. So no. easiest place right now, it's um, on pre-order and you can find it just on my website, which is thomashemingway.com. So just my name, T-H-O-M-A-S and then Hemingway with one M, just like Ernest spelled it, uh, one M, Hemingway, thomashemingway.com. And there's a link there where you can pre-order it because okay. it's coming out soon, but it's not in press just yet. But it it's amazing because I detail, just like you said at the outset, simple practical and basically yeah. free, free things that yeah. you can do on a daily basis to get yourself into this optimal health where you're thriving. I'm all about right. thriving, not thriving. just surviving yeah. your life. Like I think many of us as parents, especially we go through maybe 18 years of survival where we feel like, oh, we're just trying to make sure the kids get fed. They get off to school, yeah. they get to their practice and we're not really focusing on thriving and being yeah. present with them and enjoying being there. I mean, I'm at the point where I got two kids in college. I'm already missing my kids. And I'm like, holy crap, where did the time go? Like, yeah. oh my gosh, I, I now want to just sort of take a deep breath, slow down a little bit mm -hmm. and just enjoy being in the moment with them. Yes. And that's one of the most beneficial things that we can do present day to not only heal ourselves, but to thrive is yeah. be present and be in the moment with those that we care about. And I think yes. that's the one of the biggest untouched secrets of health is the yeah. importance of relationships and yeah. community yep. and being with those that we love. And, and that is what we live for, right? We wake up in the morning, we're like, oh right. my gosh, I can't wait to spend this day with this person or that person or do this thing. And you know, the community of it is really that relationship will help us to thrive so much. So don't forget about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you pair it with being outside, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh my dinner. gosh. That's, <laughs> that's a winner all, all day long. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, I love that mindset. And we both still have two, two little ones in elementary yeah. school, you know, yeah. and it's like, you can do this. You can choose, you can choose thriving. You can choose peace. You can choose calm. I tell my clients all the time now, like, I'm like, I get my dopamine hits off of having nothing to do now. It used to be off my to-do list. Now it's like, okay, if I have nothing to do and I can just chill with my kids or chill with my friends, like I'm doing good. You know, like that's my whole goal is to not be in this frenzied fight or flight stress state. It's mm -hmm. like, and, and it really comes through just what you said. It's just being present in each moment. And it's like, how do I feel about this and making little shifts and making little shifts, you know? And so yeah, I appreciate yeah. you so much. And it's it's easier said than done, but it, it it's a process. Be, it, it can be simple and it doesn't, it's not like flipping the switch. I mean, I have kind yeah. of a 
a weird perception of things because as a physician, I have seen many people be born and, and helped many into this life. And I've seen many die. And so yeah. life is every day is a gift. And yeah. I think if you just approach it as today is going to be a beautiful day and no matter what that is, and just enjoy it to the fullest with those that you care about, do something yeah. for somebody else and be able to not only have gratitude, but to give back into the world and the community. Like yep. you're just going to wake up smiling every yeah. day. You're like, what is yeah. this beautiful day going to bring? Who am I going to help today? Who am, yeah. who can I benefit? How can I enjoy this moment? Like yeah. it's so precious because you don't know when your last breath will be. I mean, you could get yeah. hit by a car later on today. Who knows? You know, I mean, right. it's, life right. is so precious. And I think yeah. if you have that sort of mindset of it's a gift and it's yeah. something that you want to be able to not only share with those that you love, but to be able to give back to the world and the community. And yeah, I, you can't help but wake up smiling. That's what keeps me going each and every day. hundred <laughs> percent. Oh man. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you're doing. Thanks for writing the book. I know that's no small feat. We'll link up your website and you guys can find them there. And there's so much more we weren't able to get to, but you just, you have so, I, I love that you're calling them pearls. That's what it is. It's just pearls of wisdom. You're living it you're seeing it in others and you're ready to share. And I just appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming on today. Yeah, no, thank you. And if people want to follow me on social media, I just started getting more active on Instagram as Dr. Thomas Hemingway, Dr. Thomas Hemingway. I have pretty amusing reels out there. And, and awesome. if you follow that, you'll see my beautiful kids. We, you were mentioning oh. walk, walking after you're eating right now, as you know, like I was in Utah last week and it was sub zero. And so yeah. we weren't walking after our meals, but you know what we did? We just turn on two songs, our favorite, whatever songs of the day. And we have a dance party in our living room. So if you want to do see, that all the time, yeah, you want to see Dr. Hemingway and his little girls in a dance party, you know, just follow me on social media. It's a lot of fun. You'll get a lot of health tips and awesome. Uh, thanks. I didn't realize you were on Instagram. So yeah. I just followed you and we'll link yeah, that Dr. up for everybody Thomas as Hemingway. well. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> all you. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have an amazing day. Aloha. You too. Aloha. Aloha.